Yo my people, just a quick note, I am not an astrologer, this is my personal knowledge from being a Pisces and to give another perspective on the most complex, misunderstood and underestimated sign. This is not to glorify or give people evil ideas, it's for self-awareness and the potential warning to others. Not everyone will have the same views and experiences and there's nothing wrong with that. Now let's get to it. Hearing Smelling now in my first Pisces video, I said Pisces hears everything you are saying and everything you are not saying. So let me expand on this. So let's say a friend goes to a Pisces and says, Oh, I went to the park today. A simple statement, right? What the Pisces will hear is an incomplete story. Nobody just goes to the park. You will have a motive, even if it's just to get fresh air because you've been indoors for a few days or you want to sit in the grass and read your new book. There's a reason, which doesn't really matter if it's a simple reason you went to the park, but Pisces will be alerted if crucial info has been left out. I said when Pisces are listening to a story, it's like they are viewing a little person in their head painting the story on a canvas. So when you say, I went to the park, the person in Pisces' head would have painted half a picture on the canvas. So instantly, Pisces knows there's more to that. You see, there's energies attached to words, believe it or not. Even when you text. When you say something, it is backed by an energy. There's a story behind your words. What has led you to say what you said? That's the world Pisces are connected to. It doesn't just focus on what you said. It focuses on how you said it. So if the real story was, oh, I went to the park today to meet the person I've been speaking to online, Pisces' mind will start to automatically connect the dots and lead us to at least close to this truth. So here's how a Pisces mind works. When you say half a truth, but they don't want to ask you further questions on it. Because let's be real, why you went to the park is your business, right? But if Pisces detects there's more to the story, we all think, well, if you aren't going to say the whole story, why even bring it up in the first place? What do you want me to do with this half a story? It's kind of annoying because we've got many other things to focus on and you've made my personal painter waste their paint, but anyway. So the Pisces mind goes, okay, so you went to the park. You don't usually go to the park. You've been mentioning about meeting up with that online person quite a bit lately. Did you meet them? Well, if you met them, then surely that's great news to tell. But you haven't said so, so maybe it went bad. Like as Pisces mind is doing this, the person painting in Pisces' head is painting the potential other half of the story, rubbing things out then repainting as Pisces is wandering until they come up with a full picture that will be very close to the truth. And that's only with half of what you've told us. Our imagination is extremely expansive and creative, but it's also very accurate with revealing things. You need to remember, Pisces is a sign that is not only hearing everybody's problems, we are also hearing messages from another realm. Messages from the Most High, hearing messages from our own spirit, hearing a conversation going on nearby and automatically scanning for anything that's off. It's all automatic. So what a Pisces ears does is filter through the bullshit. It has to, otherwise we will be overloaded with non-stop bullshit in our ears. So it filters through and holds onto important pieces of information that will be handy at a later time. I could be listening to somebody and be thinking of something completely different at the same time while scrolling on my phone and eating my dinner fully in tune with everything automatically I'll be in an active trance whilst doing this and if you look at me you may think I'm not listening until I respond to you showing you I heard exactly what you just said now if I was to consciously do this I wouldn't hear a thing you're saying I'd be focused on my phone distracted by all the arse in my face and the heavenly food blessing my taste buds through my dinner there was this one fight where Floyd Mayweather answered a commentator's question mid-fight. He's on TV, one-on-one -on -one in the ring, during a fight, and heard what the commentators said and quickly responded to them. Do you know how tuned in you have to be to be able to do that? When all it takes is a sudden loss of focus, even for a split second, for an opponent to knock you out in boxing. That's what being conscious in the subconscious looks like. Pisces ears are sharp. So our listening skills are very advanced. It has to be. You could tell a Pisces something two years ago and then tell the Pisces extra information to that story or tell the whole story again today 
From you start the story for a second time, which to you could feel like the first time because it was so long ago, automatically the Pisces will be like, I've heard this before. Then scan through their files in their mind and pick that story out that you told them two years ago because it was incomplete back then. Ah, there it is. Proceed. Now when you're talking to the Pisces as if it's a new story, that Pisces has got your story from two years ago out in front of them and is cross-checking. This is all happening mentally. So if you told lies the first time round and are telling the truth now, a Pisces will know. Whatever you left out the first time round and are adding it in now, the Pisces will know. Then the Pisces will have the choice to pick you up on it or not. It depends why you didn't tell the truth the first time round. If it's petty, we'll let it slide. But if it's serious, like to pull the wool over the Pisces eyes at that time back then, then we'll address it. You'll have an argument on your hands. A factual argument, which will surprise you how much the Pisces remembered from the last time. You need to be aware of the illusion Pisces always has up. You may look at us and think we are not paying attention or kind of airheaded, but you need to know we don't need to actively listen to you. Our brain is automatically detecting lies or things that need more context and is storing them whilst we're just sitting there nodding along. It will give you a false confidence that you can fool that Pisces not knowing your words have been stored. You could bareface lie to a Pisces and the Pisces can go about their day mad as hell without you even knowing they've clocked your lie until they bring it up. This is where the passive aggression could come in because sometimes we need a little time to accept the truth. You've lied to us. We've picked it up. Why lie? Do you think I'm stupid? Then it just turns to disappointment. So when the Pisces is disappointed in you and you're there trying to play happy-go-lucky, all the Pisces will see is someone who thinks they got away with fooling them and now they don't want to be around you. Pisces is not the sign to lie to because depending on how serious the lie is, how deceiving you've tried to be, how clever you think you are, that karmic mirror can be detrimental. Lying to a Pisces is like floating in the sea and a shark has come out of nowhere and is sniffing you with their nose. If they smell bullshit reeking off your skin, then your skin will be hanging out that shark's mouth. Smell is a huge part of a shark's survival, a Pisces survival. Sniff sniff, what's that smell? It smells like lying by omission. I smell hemoglobin. I smell food. And a Pisces, a shark's sense of smell, is a thousand times better than any other person or sign here. We Pisces have no armour. Intuition, empathy and sharp teeth is our armour. Our defence is attack. The fair you will be in, damn near frozen with the shark's nose sniffing along your body, you'll be praying the shark doesn't bite you and swims away. You are always one step away from a big chunk of you going missing when lying to a Pisces. So if you do lie, make sure it's a harmless one, a goldfish one because the fish will be the first one to smell when something is fishy. So back to the friend and the park. So Pisces has been told half a story. They know there's more to it. Have a drawn up conclusion that they are sure it's pretty close to the truth. So now what? Well now, a Pisces waits. Because the truth will get revealed. Do not underestimate the patience of a Pisces. This is the grandparent you are talking about. We've seen this scenario happen time and time again. But still, why are we confident it will get revealed to us? Because you've brought it into a Pisces reality. And Pisces doesn't deal with false information. It only wants real facts or it's disposed of. A woken Pisces only deals with the truth. That idealistic thinking is not how a matured Pisces is. It's real life. It's focusing on the real. We separate dreams or facades from the truth. So we can enjoy the best of both worlds correctly. Trying to fool a matured Pisces is like finding an unlabeled bottle of a clear liquid substance and drinking it. In other words, it's mindless. So here is where a Pisces can go digging just like a Scorpio. But they'll try to make it easier for you so the Pisces doesn't have to accept that you're hiding things from them. By responding something like, yeah, it was a nice day to go to the park today. I'm thinking to take Mary Kate there on the weekend. The friend could respond, ah, oh, that's nice. I'm sure she'll like it. Then the Pisces could be like, I hope so. Man, I've even spoken to her today. I should call her. How's online friend? Have you spoke to them today? Or am I the only one who neglects my partner? <laughs> Here, the Pisces is giving them the opportunity to tell the rest of the story. If you met the online friend today, 
you can simply add it in here. Now I've made that sound very amateur, please understand it's done a lot more natural than that in real life. It's automatic things, so when you try to explain it, it doesn't sound realistic, but trust me it is. I repeat, this will only be done when Pisces knows there's more information. You cannot explain it, Pisces will just know there's more. That little painter in their head will be like, come now man, feed me some more info, y'all lead me with half a painting, me can't paint no more. So as the Pisces is given the friend the opportunity to talk about it, the filing cabinet in their head is open. If the friend goes into the story, then cool. If not, then that one statement, I went to the park today, will be stored with the time and date and half of their story painted with the other half painted with the Pisces conclusion. All stored for reference later. Filing cabinet closes, Pisces keeps it moving. We don't hold grudges. We make decisions after all the info is received. We can afford to do this because we know the info will come to us. And when that friend finally does tell the Pisces, Pisces will mentally hold up their first painting, now with the full painting, from the full story from the friend's mouth and compare the two. And they will be very similar pictures. This is what Pisces experiences many times over and over and this is why Pisces learns to trust their intuition. It's not a guessing game with Pisces, it's connecting dots and coming up with accurate conclusions even without the full story. You didn't just go to the park, drank some Chardonnay on the grass and got bit by a bug. Pisces will know if you had a simple time like that but the energy behind your words, the vibe you carry with it, Pisces radar will start detecting. Beep, 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 beep. Remember, we are about the undercurrents, the behind the scenes. You cannot speak to a Pisces with a filter because the Pisces has an anti-bullshit filter pre-installed. So what you think you are filtering out will be highlighted to the Pisces like it's nothing. So they will literally hear what you are saying and what you are not saying. So basically, that Pisces friend met that online person in the park that day the person was socially awkward and pulled their willy out, scaring dog walkers and mothers pushing prams. The friend slapped the online weirdo and left, went home and blocked them. A year later is when this friend tells the Pisces. The Pisces original painted conclusion would have shown the friend meeting the person that day, that person doing something off and it was a bad experience for the friend. So it's not the detailed 100% accurate picture, but as the bigger picture, it's the same thing. You'll get the sympathy, the cry on my shoulder stuff from the Pisces, but in their head they're thinking, well if you look at that, I knew something was off, I knew you met that person that time. Then the Pisces will give an imaginary high five to the little painter, yes me Jenna, then it's on to another person to deal with. Another quick example for non-Pisces listeners, to know how our Pisces works. We all listen to music right, well the majority of us do. You know when you hear a new song and you're like, there's something familiar about this song. So you either keep listening to find out or you research it. Then you find out it was sampled from another song years ago. This is how Pisces hearing works with everything, not just music. It's hearing something that doesn't seem authentic or straightforward then revealing what it really is so now you have more of an understanding. So now when you listen to the new song, you're hearing the old song at the same time. Like you're holding up two fishes to each of your ears. One is playing the new song and, and one, one is playing, playing the old song at the same, same time. time. That's that Pisces duality. It's not just that we have a dark and light side, it's we think, feel, hear and see things in double too, triple even. And you can get the two piece combo touch if you F around enough too. This is not no schizo bipolar thing, it's being activated and in tune with both Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. Not losing control as Dr Jekyll and turning into Mr Hyde, it's being Dr Jekyll and then bringing out Mr Hyde when people fuck around. That's how we must be to everything in life Pisces. Ride the wave of anything in life. Be open to all waters and ride it. It's how we grow. Be the surfer you are at this stage. Every emotion in the ocean can be ridden if you have your surfboard with you at all times. You see how Aquarius, the sign before us, is known for their unique randomness. That's because they embrace it and don't care what others think. The Pisces who accepts their self will reach out of world levels of randomness when they embrace their self. We've got the whole ocean Pisces, understand this. So when evolved, we hear what you're saying and what you're not saying. 
We see you and your soul inside you. We feel you and ourself at the same time. We think of the good and the bad at the same time. We'll touch you and your soul at the same time. The grind doesn't stop. There's always something going on in a Pisces head. All senses are turned up to a hundred. Always. How I'm speaking to you right now is not how I speak day to day. I listen a lot more than I speak unless I'm asked for advice or got something interesting to say. I never ever speak for the sake of speaking. You cannot listen when you are speaking. You cannot be constantly scanning when you are constantly talking. The wiser you get, the quieter you become. You'll come across Pisces that are silent and Pisces that are talkative as hell. Can't stop talking. Which one of these two do you think the shark will be more activated in? Well, if you're learning, you should have said you don't know. It's a Pisces we're talking about here. You'll never know until they show you. That's the scary problem. The sixth sense siblings. Don't get me wrong when I speak about intuition, inner voices, empathy and all this stuff like it's exclusive to our Pisces only. All the science has it. Every person has a brain, a spirit. But when we're talking about signs, we're talking about energies and who has more access to what. When it comes to these type of feeler energies, the water signs are more in touch with it than the other elements. Now Scorpio is the detective of the zodiac. They will get an inkling then go digging and they will find the answer. Now say we're looking at a block of flats. In one flat we have Pisces. The flat next to Pisces is a neighbour. Then the flat next to the neighbour is Scorpio's flat. So the neighbour's in the middle. Say it's a normal evening, Pisces and Scorpio are both watching Netflix or Beach Babes Volume 7 or whatever in their flats. Next minute, they start to hear a loud argument happening in the middle flat. They both turn their TVs down to listen. Two people are arguing really loud, but it's muffled. Can't fully make out what's being said, but it's very loud. Both Pisces and Scorpio will be detecting danger. The next minute a loud bang. Bang, 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 bang. Someone's been shot. Pisces and Scorpio hears that flat door open then somebody runs out of the building. They both look out their windows but don't see the person running off. As the argument was happening, Pisces was painting a picture in their mind. The energy behind it. How the scene looks. This picture has been painted. They know what the neighbour looks like already but the other person's a mystery. During the argument, the Scorpios also got a person painting the picture in their head, but they aren't really looking at that. They've got their ear right up to the wall. They want to dive in and see what's really going on. So Pisces and Scorpio both leave their flats to go check on their neighbour. Scorpio rushes in, Pisces walks behind. They both see the body. It's a crime scene. Pisces compares it to the picture of the scenario already painted. It's similar. They knew what to expect beforehand. They're okay. Scorpio's looking at the body like, like, wow, okay, this is real. Then gets emotional, but serious at the same time. They're both emotional, but Pisces has locked that off for now. Scorpio's trying to keep their emotions in check. They check for a pulse, none found, then call an ambulance. Pisces takes a seat as Scorpio starts looking for clues. Who was in here with them? Is there any evidence left behind? Any cups with lip marks? Footprints? They start digging around the whole flat basically. Pisces has sat down to soak up the energy, to look at the neighbour on the ground and take them in. This is essential because this is what will be delivered back to the aggressor if wrong was done here, otherwise it will be disposed of. Scorpio will look at Pisces mid digging, see them sitting and daydreaming and be like, um, can you help me look for some clues of what's happening here? Then Pisces in a somewhat daze will just look at Scorpio but say nothing. Scorpio will be like, fine I'll do it myself. You see, this is the difference with these two signs. So the mood is 187, red rum, right? The Scorpio jumps into the mood and starts trying to control it. Finding clues, interrogating, all that brings a sense of control to a Scorpio, which in turn helps them deal with the feelings involved. They deal with trauma and harsh life lessons for growth, so diving into this is needed for them. Things like dealing with death doesn't scare Scorpio. They thrive off it. Pisces doesn't need to do all of that. Pisces is already comfortable and familiar with the afterlife. So Pisces takes the mood of 187, adapts to it, then chooses what to do with the mood. Has an injustice been done here? 
I will do something about this if necessary. That kind of vibe. Basically, Pisces accepts the mood and goes with it. This is what makes Pisces the most intelligent water sign. It's not triggered by it like cancer. <gasps> oh my god! It's not trying to control it like Scorpio. I know there's some evidence around here. It accepts it and adapts to it. Pisces and Scorpio makes one of the best pairings possible. It's like a duo of a hitman detective and an empathetic terminator. Very dangerous but effective combo. The only way it will not work is if the Scorpio tries to control Pisces. If, and that's a big if, Scorpio accepts that they can't, then it's a powerful duo. Otherwise, Scorpio will see a stubborn side of Pisces like a Taurus they never even knew was there. So Pisces may or may not help look for clues, but in the Pisces head, they've already sent out the signal of, tell me what happened here, reveal the person to me. Pisces doesn't just receive messages from the source, they can request it too. So while Scorpio is looking closely at surfaces for fingerprints, Pisces will come out of the daze, kinda delayed, and start talking. Who are you telling what to do? Type of tone. What do I need to find clues for? To hand to the police? You're touching everything that could mess up the actual forensics job. For what? To understand what's happened here? Then that's it. I'm doing my own internal investigation and will take matters into my own hands. But if you find something, you let me know, Scorpio. Then the Pisces will go stand outside for a little, you know, for dramatic effect. Scorpio will pause for a second like, what the fuck are you talking about? And who are you talking to? Anyway, then goes back to digging. And from that moment, the Scorpio will look at Pisces as impractical. For now anyway. Scorpios who are unevolved in that snake state will look down on Pisces. They will actually describe their self as if they're an evolved Pisces. They'll think they're wiser, more spiritual, more blessed. All of that and not even understand what Pisces is capable of or is about because they're self-centered at that stage. They'll think Pisces is shallow and doesn't want to dive deep. They'll look at Pisces and Cancer as their younger siblings. Little do they know, Pisces doesn't just go deep. They go profound. They swim in the abyss. It's easy to go deep when you start at the bottom. Drake, a Scorpio, has a song called Started From The Bottom Now We Here. He references a lot of Scorpio stuff in his music, so I know for a fact that was also a direct Scorpio reference. But how about starting off as the mist over the sea? and then being able to travel to and from the bottom at will. This is how Pisces knows Scorpio, but Scorpio don't know Pisces. Pisces doesn't just jump into the fire trying to put it out the way Scorpio does. Pisces at the very least puts on a fireman or firewoman outfit first and brings a water cannon. Pisces will be a little irritated that they're sitting there studying while Scorpio's faffing about and giving them attitude because Pisces isn't playing ball with the digging. So Pisces will give them a little nibble back if they choose to. Wear a mirror, remember? And who doesn't like a bit of drama? The thing is, it's all good Scorpio looking for clues, but will Scorpio go and then risk their life to avenge this person if the opportunity arises? This isn't a paid hitman job. This isn't a grudge that's been held for 10 years. This isn't a juicy mystery to solve. This is potentially an innocent person 187 would by a bad person. This could be a next Ted Bundy going around. Pisces is willing to go all out for this person if so. No other sign will. It's not their job to anyway. It's ours. This goes further than just protecting your family and friends. It's protecting the collective good. You need to understand, the 8th house is complete darkness. It's pitch black. It's the bottom of the sea. That's why Scorpios are diggers and investigators. They're feeding around in darkness, going off their hunches to find what they're looking for. And they find whatever needs finding better than anyone else and brings it to the light. The 12th house is darkness and lightness. Pisces operates in both. The bottom of the deep sea and the surface where the light is. The mist going over the sea and the storms above it. But what others fail to realise is, Pisces are able to keep the curtains drawn so they can work in complete darkness. Because an intuned Pisces can navigate in the dark as if it's light. Do not let that go over your head. Pisces doesn't dig around in the dark. They are guided in the dark. They float in the dark. Pisces closes their eyes to see better. This is why the whole ocean belongs to Pisces. When you come from a place where you get answers just by closing your eyes, focusing on something 
allowing it to travel through the internal and external universe to come back to you answered or exposed, you will understand why Pisces operates the way they do. Pisces doesn't fully know what's happened here, yet, but knows that neighbour has a good soul. They downloaded them years ago. They've got the picture painted in their head. It's just missing the other person's face and a few other details. So what drove that person to do this to them? I'm looking at a 187, but what happened to lead to this? For now, I'll store this in my files. When I look that person in their eyes, once they're revealed to me, I'll know what happened here and I'll know what to do next. This is a Pisces mindset which will sound unrealistic to everyone else, until it's not. Remember what I've said in another video, Pisces is an offensive sign, in every way, but they won't even appear defensive. They will appear as if they're not even in the game, sitting on the sideline. Pisces can show you their dark and light side in one, and you will only see the light side until they switch that light side off, right before they switch your life light off. Pisces has the confidence, this revelation of the red rummer will play out. It's a manifestation that will manifest if Pisces wills it. The Pisces and Scorpio have both gone into the neighbor's flat with no new information. If they both stayed in their flat and went off the noises they heard alone, i.e. in the darkness, Pisces will be ahead of the curve. Because while Scorpio was hearing the argument and itching to investigate it, Pisces was listening. Pisces are already looking at their painting. It's half complete. Pisces doesn't leave things unfinished, no matter how long it takes. Time doesn't exist. If the cancer was in another flat nearby, they'd be the first to call the police, an ambulance, and then tend to the person. CPR and all of that. They'll care mainly about making sure the person's okay and the area's safe. If that perpetrator's still in the building, making the cancer's environment unsafe, that cancer will take their ass out. But in general, they're about nurturing, moon energy, mother energy. Scorpios are about what happened here. Who's responsible? Let's break this down. Let's get to the bottom of this. Passionate investigative energy. Mars and Pluto energy. Pisces are about the what happened here and does something need to be done about it? What forces has been at play? Revealing the bigger picture energy. Neptune and Jupiter energy. All the water signs care, but Pisces and Scorpio will dive deeper into the situation but in different ways. Cancer's nature is to tend to the victim but not get stuck in the emotional side of it because they can't handle it on a real deep level or they're just not bothered to go there. That's why Cancers are on the beach more time. They stay at surface level while Scorpio and Pisces deals with the actual depths of water. It's funny, Pisces get called impressionable when one of the most manipulative signs, Scorpio, cannot manipulate a Pisces but a Scorpio can manipulate the hell out of a cancer. You have to witness it for yourself. The reason you will find some Scorpios not liking Pisces is, Scorpios are in the dark too, and like to remain private and hidden. But Pisces coming around is like shining a torch in a loft. It exposes what's in the dark, which basically means they see through a Scorpio. We're the only sign that can, and some of them like it because they feel seen, but most of them don't because they aren't ready to be seen. Scorpio's privacy is special to them. They're serious about it. So when Wishy Washy Pisces comes along, la la, la 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 la, waving torches around, they don't like it. And that's the exact same thing that happens when a Pisces gets around another Pisces. Torches get shone, dark fishes get illuminated. And Scorpios also get pissed because when they come across a Pisces secret door whilst exploring in the dark, all bolted up, they try to pick the locks. They try to kick it down. They try to peek under the door and nothing works, even if they get a glimpse through a crack. All they see behind the door is darkness. So then it's like, you can't know all my shit, Pisces, open up now. I ain't playing with you and your fishy self. So that's how Scorpios know Pisces are up to fishy stuff, but don't know what Pisces are up to. When Scorpios gets their wings is when they listen and not just hear. That's when they become tuned in like Pisces where they look at their little painter in their head too. Scorpios are the fixed water sign, meaning they are more emotional than Pisces and Cancer deep down. They just hide it well. They're private, they're frozen, stuck in the mood. Pisces is ruled by Neptune. Neptune was the Roman god of the seas and the storms. In astrology, Neptune is the planet of dreams, fantasy, spirituality, psychic ability, imagination, idealism and illusions. 
It represents the universal ocean of all beings being at one. Once Pisces wakes up from being born under Neptune's fog, those dreams, illusions, fantasies becomes a Pisces powers. That universal ocean becomes a Pisces home. Everyone thinks Neptune makes Pisces deluded. No, Neptune is with Pisces revealing things. It backs us up. Neptune is the reason everyone is not with is delusional. This whole world we're in is under the fog of Neptune. The whole world itself is an illusion. That's why normal people who start thinking outside of the box gets called woke. You ever heard theories that aliens are actually in the ocean and not above in space? That space is the ocean or that the ocean leads to space? That type of wokeness. Neptune naturally uncovers all the bullshit for a Pisces that is tuned in. Which is why Pisces can see everything on this earth that you can't. Pisces are in control of the seas and the oceans because they are at one with it. They surrendered to the source and are now back here, backed by the source. Scorpios become their most powerful enlightened self when they learn to let go of trying to control everything. When they give their self over to the source. Phoenix Scorpios become untouchable because they no longer try to fight off anger, fight off sadness. They become their strongest when they stop fighting. From there, the source, their ancestors, spirits, guardian angels will fight for them. But the eagle of Phoenix Scorpio is the stage where Scorpios end up thinking they can see through a Pisces. But what is really happening is they now realise how bad a Pisces can be. From they get their wings, the eagle Scorpios can start flying over the sea and picking off sleeping Pisces. They can start diving in and eating the little fishes for dinner or fly over the beaches, picking up the cancers and dropping them back into the sea for bants. Scorpios can be on some reckless shit at that middle stage too. I hope you lot follow what I'm saying because this is figuratively speaking. But when they come across an awoken Pisces, when they come across the sharks, the killer whales, the mermaids, Scylla, the Kraken, Megalodon, the Sirens and all that other mystical fuck Pisces can transform into, they get to sense a greater evil than their selves at the snake stage. What makes Scorpios dangerous at the snake slash scorpion stage? By default, they are full of toxins. The eighth house is all about the stuff nobody wants to deal with. It's a dark and toxic place. So because of this, Scorpio is naturally a toxic sign. And no, not all Scorpios are toxic, but it will be common for you to see it when they're young or unevolved with the jealousy streak and the projected anger. Let's forget Mars and Pluto for a second, because people blow up that negatively too. Mars is what gives Scorpio passion and laser light focus on conquering things. And Pluto can destroy things to rebuild it, like breaking a bad habit and replacing it with a good one. But Scorpio rules the sexual organs and the bowels of the zodiac body. Take note to this. What does your bowels do? It's where your body flushes out the toxins. It's where you drop all that morning glory from yesterday and be able to load up on what today's got to offer. But if you're constipated, because you're not in a healthy way, you will be full of toxins. It's like having a cork shoved up your asshole. So Scorpios can be full of shit in terms of lies and betrayal. They can go through so much shitty situations in life. They can throw shit at you. They can get shit thrown at them. They can get you in deep shit. They can be always on some shit. Some of them can be sexually into that toxic release hole too. So when they sting others, it's not just a sting. It's also a transfer of venom, verbally or physically. It's a poisonous sting because they are full of it naturally. So they are transferring that poison into you too and it will fuck you up. It's literally like sleeping with someone raw who didn't tell you they have an STD. When you physically find out about it, you will literally feel a sting. You go to take a piss and you're like, ow! It's hot and burning. And now you need to pop to the clinic. And it's very easy to go online and see a toxic snake level Scorpio who somehow thinks they are Phoenix proud of stinging people and why is that because hurt people hurt people it's as simple as that the snake scorpio is not to be played with because they are bottom barrel evil look at the snake and scorpion they crawl on their stomach 
it's operating at a very low level. So if you don't watch out or step on them, you will get stung or bitten, which could be fatal. They are a sign that is full of their self naturally. So when Scorpios removes that cork from their bum hole and finally take that massive dump and release all of that evil, that's when they become light enough to start flying. They're born with the tools to rise up out of the mud, but that is all in the dark. Not all of them find or want the tools to become that bright shining light. You can mistake a Scorpio for a Leo when they find their light. That's why it's a popular sign, because it's the potential rags to riches sign. Capricorns rise from the sea to the top of the mountain, the sea goat. Scorpios literally rise from stinky, sticky swamp with scorpions in the bucket. Forget crabs in the bucket. Nah, scorpions in the bucket. But they can end up flying freely. So as they rise up to the phoenix state, they no longer want to or have to sting anyone because they aren't toxic anymore. They have no poison to transfer. They flush their self of the world's toxins and can shine like the diamonds they are. They can still sting you when evolved, but it will be more to warn you off because they no longer need to physically harm people because they become spiritual soldiers like Pisces. They'll let the spirits deal with you. And sometimes that literally means letting a Pisces deal with you for them. They will turn to Pisces. So when they're able to see the real evil of the spiritual ocean by flying and seeing Pisces involvement, Scorpio will stop in their tracks mid-air and be like, what the fuck is going on here? Because they aren't just evil sex freaks contrary to popular belief. They're born with negative energy that they must flush. So that's where the dark side of them come from. Whereas Pisces grows to find its dark side to balance out with the light. So Scorpios are indirectly connected with evil. Pisces are directly connected with evil by nature. But that Scorpios come from an evil place, they are always able to return there if you push them. Scorpios get to see what Pisces is really dealing with here. When the Scorpio is no longer self-centered, they get to see this dark sea energy they've been trying to control this whole time is in the hands of a Pisces and they get to see Cancers are not so innocent either at all. Because Cancers are extremely dangerous when they'll see emotions take over, when they touch the water. It's all fun and games about Cancers crying until they go Henry the Eighth on you. To put that in a visual sense to understand Cancers, like say a Cancer and a Scorpio get into a situation, like they walk past each other and bump each other's shoulders. And say they both turn around and the Scorpio's death staring the Cancer down. Cancers are the type to smile at first from feeling uncomfortable and look around to avoid eye contact and then completely switch into a demon the next minute. That's not to say Cancers will defeat Scorpios or vice versa. It's just so you understand how Cancers move and why they are dangerous. That emotional swing is uncontrolled. The strong emotions will flood their shell and they'll just ah it out. Remember, they're represented by the yin and yang too, like Pisces. But Pisces is just in control of the switch. Cancers are not. So this is why Scorpios come closer than any other sign in understanding what Pisces is capable of. That's for certain. They get glimpses of it, but they'll never get the full picture of Pisces. No one will, because Pisces has the whole ocean to stay hidden in. If Scorpio goes up, Pisces can just go down. And more times than not, Cancers are not in the sea for Pisces to even hide from them. Remember, we're dealing with a crab, a scorpion slash bird, and a fish here. Only one of those is expert swimmers in all types of waters. And only two of them are actual sea creatures. Cancers just doesn't want anything to do with the sea energy. Scorpios end up leaving it by flying, whilst Pisces ends up wielding it. People say Cancers and Scorpios are more alike due to having a defence and claws, rare, rare, rare. But when it comes to being openly loving and auditioning out real evil when matured, you'll realise Pisces and Cancer are more similar. One's just with it for a lifetime, while the other's just with it for a moment. Scorpios are with it until they're not. So Scorpios are not the evil everyone thinks they are. They are good people deep down. They'll just meddle with evil. Cancers are good people but they are low-key evil, very low-key. I won't describe Pisces as good people because they are a collective mix of good and evil. They can be good, but evil still there with Pisces because Pisces will do wrong for a right reason. It's better to accept that as a Pisces and for others to hear it too 
because the Pisces that acts like they don't have a bad bone in their body are more dangerous than the ones that admit it. It's that same connection the oldest sibling has with the youngest sibling in a typical family. Cancers would technically look up to Pisces and the middle child Scorpio just does their own thing. But as the middle child Scorpio gets older, they end up moving with the older sibling Pisces more and starts gaining wisdom. While the younger sibling Cancer, that's always been under the older sibling Pisces guidance, ends up with the knowledge of it but not using proper wisdom with it. For example, it's like the youngest sibling finding their older sibling's beater in a shoebox in the back of their closet. That's the knowledge. They know their older sibling's bad, but they now know where a bit of their badness is. So when push comes to shove, they will just run there and grab it and use it. That's cancer. Scorpio's got their own beater that they carry with them at all times. It's new to them, they're inexperienced, but they've got it on them. Then one day, they stumble across their younger sibling cancer playing with one, aiming it in their room. The Scorpio's like, what the fuck are you doing? Whose is that? Give it here. The cancer's like, it's Pisces, don't tell mom. The Scorpio takes it off the cancer and brings it to the Pisces, not even knowing their older sibling even had one too. Did you know cancer was playing with your beater in their room? Which one? What do you mean which one? What do you mean my beater? You sure that isn't yours? You think I haven't found your one? What are you talking about? How long have you known that? Don't worry. Well, look at it. It looks old. This isn't mine. It smells of fish. Since when was you about that? Cancer could have accidentally hurt someone in here with it. <sighs> oh, I must have forgot that one. I had that when I was your age. What? I'll chat to Cancer. Don't worry. But close the door, Scorpio. It's time we had a little talk about the ocean. This is where the middle child and the eldest child get talking. But this is all new to the middle child. The older child already knows all about their younger sibling. So they're now just going to enlighten them. Just dump pure wisdom on them. Where the middle child will be stunned like, who is this person? It won't be the sibling they thought they knew. They will leave that conversation with so much new information, knowledge and wisdom and still not know nothing about their older sibling. But will be thinking they do now know. Remember, Scorpios are not the sign of wisdom. That's Pisces and Sagittarius from Jupiter. Scorpios get enlightened and from there they can use it and share it. Pisces are born enlightened. They just need to wake up and also get in darkened. <laughs> Scorpios can also show Pisces a thing or two about the darkness in the early years because they will typically experience it before a Pisces as they mature quicker than any other sign. But Pisces has a very unique way of telling you everything whilst telling you absolutely nothing at all. The same with Sagittarius, talking in riddles. All the middle child will now know for certain is their eldest sibling is badder than them. Pisces will tell them what they need to tell. They typically won't start confessing all their crimes unless they're proving a point or it's got exposed somehow. Whereas Cancers will innocently go to Scorpio, this one time, this idiot said fuck mama. Some went and grabbed Pisces beater and went and shoved it in their face. They were scared. I was like, don't talk about my mama. All the while, Scorpio's listening thinking, huh, you as well, huh? That's the energy with the three signs. Pisces to Cancer is like, don't worry about having your own one. You can't really handle that, but you don't need to anyway. I'll do it for you. And if I don't, then Scorpio will. And stop snooping in my room, man. Get out of the house more. So Cancers will know, not only will my older siblings back me, but I can also use both their weapons myself if I can find it. The typical loose youngest sibling that will get the older two in trouble. So that's why it's normally just a Scorpio and Pisces duo, not a water trio. So put the private Phoenix Scorpio next to the secretive in-tuned Pisces and you will have an unbeatable pair because they are fully on working at sea. And if Cancer wants to get their hands dirty with sea water, you will meet the worst trio. Water is life. So back to that person's flat. If there's a wound to be healed or an area to be secured, Cancer's already done that. If there's evidence to be found, Scorpio's already got their hands on it. If there's no evidence to be found, then this goes to Pisces' world. Pisces versus Scorpio. Here's a quick real life story involving a well known Scorpio and a Pisces and couple others. Sammy Gravano, a Pisces, was once the underboss of the Gambino crime family, ran by the well known John Gotti, a Scorpio. The Scorpio Gotti 
and another Scorpio, Frank De Chico, needed to take out the previous Gambino crime family boss, the boss of bosses, in an us or them situation. So the Scorpios went to the Pisces to help them take down this boss, as the Pisces was an already known made man, hitman and businessman. The Scorpios needed the Pisces help. So the Pisces planned and orchestrated the whole execution alongside a Libra, Frank Lacasio, a Virgo, Shorty, and Quack Quack, a Leo. So we got two Scorpios, a Pisces, a Virgo, and a Leo. Shortly after the Gambino boss's execution, the Scorpio Frank De Chico and the Pisces Gravano allowed the Scorpio John Gotti to run the family as the boss of bosses so they can work behind the scenes instead as it was too hot of a position. The Pisces and the Scorpio decided to give Gotti a test run as the boss because his ego was so big he wouldn't take any other position. So the Scorpio Gotti was boss. The other Scorpio De Chico was underboss. The Pisces a captain. The Leo handled 187 contracts and the Libra was in the ranks. The Scorpio De Chico was soon red rummed by a car bomb attack. The boss Scorpio then made the Virgo Shorty take over the underboss role. The Virgo then went to jail so the Scorpio boss and Pisces captain started to plan things together. The Pisces took over the right hand role, the conciliaire, from being the captain. And the Libra, the Cassio, took over the Virgo's previous role as the new underboss. So the boss Scorpio Gotti now had the right hand man Pisces Gravano in their air giving advice helping him not make mistakes while the Libra ran the rest. They started finding members to fill positions etc, eliminating liabilities. The Scorpio Gotti then went jail so the Pisces ran the family for him with the Libra. Through some underhanded tactics of the Pisces and Cole, the Scorpio gets out of jail and is back running things. Around this time, the Pisces started sensing the Scorpio's envy towards the successful businesses the Pisces was running. Sammy was a rare breed in the Mafia because normally you're either a gangster or a racketeer. But as a typical Pisces who was in tune with himself, Sammy was both. The Scorpio felt threatened. Word was getting back to the Pisces about it. The Scorpio probably clocked on that he's the boss but he's not really the boss boss. The Scorpio Gotti did a reshuffle and made Frank Lacasio, the Libra who was the underboss now be the right hand man and put the Pisces as the underboss. The Scorpio Gotti was annoyed that the Pisces Gravano had a big reputation even though the Pisces was on their side. Even though the Pisces was running the city with so many businesses, the Pisces literally worked for him. So the Scorpio profited immensely off it, yet the Scorpio was jealous of how much money the Pisces was bringing in. The Scorpio was paranoid because he knew the Pisces didn't need him and technically should be the one running things since it was the Scorpio who went to him for help to get their position in the first place. So the Scorpio started making the Pisces do 187s even though these jobs are below the underboss level now. That's more lower level stuff like an associate or maid guy or captain. But still the Scorpio was making the Pisces do these things for no apparent reason when others lower could instead. The Scorpio starts to love the media attention, the fame, started to be loud whilst it angered the Pisces because this is supposed to be secret underground things. This angered a lot of others in the Mafia. They hated the Scorpio for how loud he was being. The Scorpio goes jail a couple more times and beats other cases through the Pisces and others underhanded work. Again, the Scorpio gets out again and is now considered the Teflon Don by the media from how much trials he was beating. None of the Mafia was happy with all this attention because it was doing damage to the organisation. Lots of crucial evidence gets recorded by bugs set up by the FBI in the Gambino's headquarters, discussing incriminating stuff. The three then got arrested, the boss Scorpio, the right hand Libra and the underboss Pisces. The Pisces Sammy went guilty for a racketeering charge, the Libra got racketeering charges too and the boss Scorpio got charged with 5 red rumps, loan sharking etc. Everyone gets denied bail. The usual attorneys gets disqualified from helping the Pisces and Scorpio because they were seen as part of the evidence. The wiretap recordings created a problem between the Pisces and the Scorpio because it revealed the Scorpio bad mouthing the Pisces to the Libra and telling lies. Then the Pisces finds out that the Scorpio was plotting to eliminate the Pisces through these recordings too. The FBI made the Pisces listen to it come out of the Scorpio's mouth. Funny enough, the Libra's mouth was hardly heard 
during all these outbursts from the Scorpio, captured on tape. The Libra, the right hand man, didn't agree with what the Scorpio was saying or planning to do with the Pisces. Quack Quack, the Leo's mouth, was heard on tape frequently insulting the Scorpio Gotti about how he chats too much and treats people bad. So the Pisces starts realising the Scorpio is making up all these stories and plots because you have to be tactical with key member eliminations in the Mafia, getting permissions from higher ups and all sorts. So that's why the Scorpio was making the Pisces do all those jobs that were under his position. It was part of the Scorpio's master plan. The plot was, the Pisces is a loose cannon, he's eliminating this person and that person off his own back. I can't control him, I love him, but he has to go. That was the Scorpio's angle before they even all went jail. Pinning all the hits the Scorpio told the Pisces to do on it being the Pisces' own loose decisions. So with the Pisces hearing all this, it created tension between the two. So whilst in jail, the Scorpio went to the Pisces and said, the police has these tapes of me saying you're a loose cannon etc. Yeah it's lies, but take ownership for these charges I have and I'll be free. The boss needs to be free. Clearly now, the Pisces feels betrayed because it's a snake move on top of a snake move and a Pisces is the last person you do that to. So the Pisces said, I'll do you one better. How about I expose this whole thing and snitch on everybody. Fuck the mafia, fuck you and fuck myself. It is what it is. And the Pisces did just that. Now, on these recordings, police caught the Scorpio snitching on their own self, admitting to orchestrating numerous crimes, even the ones they were trying to pin on the Pisces. So the Scorpio was going down either way. The feds had evidence on them all. On top of that, the Scorpio boss didn't allow the Pisces to have his own lawyer. So I mean, do the whole math here. So in turn, the Pisces lost complete trust in the Scorpio. The Scorpio and their lawyers tried to break the Pisces stance, but it didn't work. You need to remember, this is a Pisces that has executed a staggering amount of people under the Scorpio's orders and are now hearing the Scorpio selling them out. It all added up to the Pisces with the hate and they already saw from the Scorpio, just a bunch of bad mindedness. It's betrayal, typical early stage Scorpio behaviour. The snake. After all the Pisces had done for them, the Pisces confessed to his involvement in 19 Red Rummings, which included the Scorpio and Libra's involvements and many other Mafia guys. Crooked cops, a total of 38 people got brought down. According to the Pisces, he and the Libra made a pact to eliminate the Scorpio when they got out of jail because the Scorpio also wanted the Libra to take on his charges too and due to the Scorpio's treatment towards the Libra in jail, both the Libra and Pisces was facing minor charges compared to the Scorpios and both felt betrayed. The Libra only publicly stayed loyal to the Scorpio because he was scared the Scorpio would harm his son who was also in the Mafia. The Pisces declared to never be an underboss to anyone ever again once they're out. It's either boss or nothing and the Libra agreed to be the Pisces underboss because the Pisces might as well have been the boss from the start. But all they both really wanted to do was take out the Scorpio as soon as possible. They already took out a boss before and was ready to do it again. I don't know at what stage that was for the Pisces to still press the nuke button on everything. Could have been a couple years before. But still, the Scorpio and Libra ended up getting life imprisonment after the Pisces testified. Although, there is evidence of the Pisces trying to help the Libra out after all these years, saying the Libra wasn't involved in this and that. The Pisces was originally facing life without parole, but only got five years. But by the time he was sentenced, the Pisces had already served four years, so only had less than a year left to do. Understand Pisces, especially dark-sided Pisces, isn't afraid of no jail time. Jail is like literally home to a Pisces. The Pisces snitched in response to being betrayed, not for being scared of jail time. He was already loyal to a family. If he had to serve time for the family out of loyalty, then he would have, no question. This wasn't family he was snitching on. This was an enemy and he was nailing the coffin. And he only came out and ended up doing 20 years for another crime later on. And he's back out as an old man on the same smoke he was before he went in. I keep telling you though, it's not rainbows over here. Obviously, the Scorpio sent people to eliminate the Pisces, but the Pisces is still in the ocean breathing to this day. He's got a popular YouTube channel out now, if anyone's interested, called Salvatore Sammy the Bull Gravano. His name, basically. What I want to focus on here is... F around and find out. Pisces as an underboss or right hand man to your illegal crimes or whatever you got going on will be an angel to you 
and a nightmare for others because they will go with the flow of everything. But when the Pisces realises trust is not there and others want to throw them under the bus, they will dissolve you and your whole setup. It's as simple as that. This is Neptune energy we're talking. Not destructive like Pluto, it's Neptune, magic, poof, <laughs> disappear. Now maybe the Scorpio got mad when they realised, wait, why did the Pisces let me run things when clearly they are more of a boss than I am? What is the Pisces planning for me? We all know Scorpios deals with things like betrayal, but they're not always the ones getting betrayed. They do the betraying too. Anyone who tells you Pisces isn't about revenge is smoking Neptune dust. You're dealing with the bringer of karma here, the ender of cycles here. And let's be fair to the Scorpio. If you've got a 187 in machine under you, that's also a money making machine. Even though they are loyal to you, you would be wary knowing they could potentially take you out and overthrow you. Scorpios will naturally be paranoid like that and knows the power Pisces has. They deep down know they can't control a Pisces. So it can easily end up being an it's either you or me situation no matter which sign is at the top. Because both signs deals with death and Scorpio isn't trusting a Pisces under them and a Pisces isn't trusting a Scorpio under them. But the thing is, Pisces isn't snaky like that. They will literally have you like you got them as long as you're loyal. No matter how much you can't predict a Pisces actions, they aren't disloyal to their own people. Pisces, even if they are better at something than you, will let you take centre stage if it means they can remain hidden. But a low vibrational or dark Pisces and Scorpio will snake you all day, whether they're in a position above or below you. And that's why I say even Scorpios cannot read a Pisces, even when a Pisces means them well. Pisces will escape by any means, whether that's a ghosting escape or a violent escape, but they are breaking out of that situation and that is exactly what the bull did. It's one thing going to a Pisces to try and make them take a hit for you, but it's another when the Pisces already knows you was planning to set them up before this issue even arrived. It will go left for you. And that is what happened here. Whether you agree with snitching or not, try play a Pisces and you will play yourself. And the Scorpio found out about it here. And they always will when they step to a Pisces. Snitching is one thing, but if you're on trial with your friends and you got solid evidence, they're planning to turn on you during the trial and hear them chatting about exterminating you before the trial even was a thing. How are you seriously reacting to that? We can call people snitches and rats all day, but what are you doing in that situation? I'm sure Sammy would have rather took the Scorpio to the middle of the ocean, but they were all in jail here. Had to move a bit more wise. Isn't the captain supposed to go down with the ship? The captain shouldn't be getting in one of the paddle boats and letting one of the crew members go down with the ship instead. Unless that's how it works in the Mafia, I don't know. And this is why Pisces isn't light, because when others try to play them and fail, they get mad at the Pisces dodging it, instead of being mad at their own inefficiency. You need to go above and beyond to defeat a Pisces, because after Pisces, after the 12th house, there is nothing. There is nothing more after Pisces when it comes to this realm. Whilst you're here trying to battle one half of the Pisces, the other half is in another. If Pisces was the boss in this scenario, do you think they would try and make the people under them take the rap for their crimes? A true selfless Pisces, ready to risk it all for others. Fuck no. Cancers are selfish. If you aren't in their shell in one way or another, then they aren't doing shit for you. Don't let that mother energy fool you. They can be ruthless. Scorpios are selfish and self-centered until they start elevating but only at the phoenix is when they truly care about others and they don't all make it there. Pisces has a sense of selflessness even before they mature unless they're dark-sided. Do you think Sammy would have opened his mouth if everyone stayed loyal and just took the rap for their own charges? He already went guilty for his charges. Then the Scorpios coming around like, take my charges too. Don't listen to that recording of me snaking you. We go Pisces. What again, what again, up in here, remember? I mean, they were all in a dark-sided world anyway. Nobody can really trust anybody over there. This is what I say about Pisces and behind the scenes work. Because when I was growing up, I knew about John Gotti. Who didn't know? Everyone was familiar with the name at least. Only time others out of the know would have heard of the Pisces would have been when he lifted the veil on the whole operation himself. All that time... It was the Pisces pulling a crazy amount of strings behind the scenes for the man in the limelight. Same with Libras. They're known for being chatty, peaceful and persuasive. 
keeping the balance, but they are also very dangerous behind the scene workers. You'll think Libras just sit on the fence and don't have their own opinions. Nah, you're dealing with the master of verbal communication there. You'll be surprised of the accurate picture a Libra will get of you from how you speak to them. Same time you're thinking they're airheaded. A Pisces and a Libra on the same page is hell on earth. Absolute hell on earth. I call that duo the house of mirrors. When they both individually decide to take justice in their own hands, it's a wrap. So put them together and it's Bonnie and Clyde. The real Bonnie and Clyde was actually a Libra and a Aries funny enough. Bonnie was the Libra and Clyde was the Aries. But trust me, a Pisces and a Libra would make a Libra and an Aries crimes look like child's play in terms of evil doing. Aries are extremely violent, but Aries isn't evil. They're just reactive, impulsive. Pisces means all the evil it does. It means every bit of evil it releases. Libras can mirror all the evil on earth. Pisces can too. But Pisces will also bring evil from another realm and project it onto earth. Pisces can literally open portals or open their own self to be a vessel to out of the world evil spirits. Meaning a Pisces can allow their self to be possessed for a purpose. The Libra can then also reflect that out of the world evil from the Pisces and shine it across the whole globe. We're talking two demons standing in a house of mirrors. That means demons everywhere of different shapes and sizes. And these two signs are often compared to each other in terms of the weakest online. Man, you're in for a nasty surprise if you test that out in reality. Venus, Taurus and Libra's ruler, will have you fooled when it comes to Libra because it's in the air element. With Taurus being the earth element, you know they don't play and won't move for nobody. With Libra, they will go along with you, just like a Pisces, whilst they can be planning your funeral service. If you want to find some evil, find something beautiful, then look behind it. That's Venus. Mars is what you get is what you see. You don't need to worry about Mars. Just be mindful and move out of the way of it. You can plan for Mars with Aries. And the only sign that can plan for a Scorpio's Mars is Pisces. You can't plan for Venus. You can't plan for Neptune. So it also shouldn't surprise you that Venus is exalted in Pisces. Meaning Venus loves to be in the Pisces house. And with Neptune there too, then you get a beautiful nightmare. But people just look at that case as Sammy the Pisces is a snitch. But when you deep it, all he done was Uno reverse the Scorpio's betrayal before it could happen to him. Threw up that karmic mirror. Only a Scorpio can have a bloody Pisces and a Libra as their left and right hand and still fuck everything up. Unless that Scorpio's at the Phoenix level, they're better off alone in stealth, doing damage under the quiet. If that was a Capricorn, a Libra or a Pisces at the top with the two other as left and right hands, that establishment will still be standing today. Capricorn isn't half sea creature for nothing. Capricorns and Scorpios get cross-referenced in terms of being resourceful. But unless that Scorpio is at the bare minimum eagle stage when dealing with power, they'll just abuse it whilst Capricorns know just how to use it from the jump. That Pluto energy put TNT around that whole mafia operation, pissing everyone off. All the Pisces done was light the match. Scorpio is destruction. Pisces is obliteration. Sammy Gravano once said, I'm a master double crosser. John's a double crosser. I'm a master double crosser. We played chess and he lost. Pisces are about the truth and hold everyone's secrets. If you force a Pisces hand, then you are fucked. You can say I'm biased or whatever, but as long as you get in your head what you're dealing with when it comes to Pisces as a whole, then I'm good. Call me what you like. It's water of a duck's back. Whether you hear it or you don't, when it comes to Pisces, you're going to feel it anyway. So listening can only give you a heads up for the potential pain coming your way. Look at Kevin Samuels, another Pisces. Many people hated him for how he would verbally break people down, but take away his delivery and all he was doing was telling the truth. If you're unfamiliar with him, just YouTube Kevin Samuel's savage moments. But with Sammy the Bull, it also can be a whole load of bullshit because, well, it's a Pisces. So you make your own mind up on all of that and do your own research. Either way, he was a cold-blooded shark. This Pisces could have been planning to overthrow the Scorpio from the start. I mean, he helped the Scorpio overthrow the previous boss. So who really, really knows? But I do believe, because the Pisces was already their own boss, 
their own boss under a boss in a family, they would have really wanted the Scorpio to take the lead so they can remain hidden and not even bother remove the Scorpio because then the Pisces would have to take over which means being in the light, which means being detected, which means being caught, which means no freedom. That's not Pisces. You'll find many Pisces versus Scorpio wars with celebrities for example and it will always be over control. Nelly and Chingy is one I stumbled across the other day. Basically, Nelly the Scorpio had an issue with Chingy, the Pisces rise to fame and tried to sun him basically. Like remember who's the daddy stuff. Cause they're from the same area. Nelly also wanted Chingy to sign under him but Chingy went with Ludacris's label instead. Nelly sent a slide dig in a song and Chingy clapped back and it led to real street problems. Floyd Mayweather and Javonte Davis is another. Mayweather the Pisces guided Davis to Scorpio during his come up but the Scorpio no longer wanted the Pisces guidance once they reached star status and wanted to go it alone. But hey, can't really say much about that. People need to be allowed to grow on their own. Then there's P Diddy, a Scorpio, and the stories of what he did to Usher a Libra and Justin Bieber a Pisces. I mean, draw your own conclusions. He's definitely on some crazy stuff behind the scenes that may one day make it to the light. I just know the stuff he's on will make R Kelly look like Jesus if it's revealed. Man, I sound like a Gemini right now with all the reporting. I'm sure there's many other examples, good and bad, but I don't follow celebrities like that to be honest. Leave any you know of or your own personal experiences in the comments. And I ain't saying it's always the Scorpio's fault, I'm just saying, allow it Scorpi. Stop trying to war us. We're here for you. Sign your big scaly sibling. XOXO. Sight. Hypnotism. Now time's moved on since the 187 apartment incident. No leads, paperwork's under a pile somewhere on Bunk's desk in the wire. Pisces is in a pub one day, eating a Sunday roast, watching the football. Then their ears starts to burn a bit and picks up a quiet conversation a few tables away. Mate, I regret it man. It's just they owed me the money, hid from me and said they weren't going to pay it man. So I told them, I told them, I'm going to go to your daughter's flat and you know, and they said go ahead man. Mate, that's your brother though. So you shut your eye? I regret it man. He said he's too scared to turn me in. Just wipe off the debt. Mate, that's fucked up you know. I know. Now automatically, the Pisces hearing this will connect the dots. They might second guess their self, but the 187er has revealed their self. Pisces got what they asked for. So what happens here is, Pisces sends a signal out of come talk to me. Now I know I've said people will just come up to our Pisces and start confessing which they do, but Pisces has the ability to pull you in too. It's like turning on a magnet. The fish becomes the fishing net. Pisces is a predator, never forget. So Pisces will sit there emitting this energy of, come here and talk, I'm waiting to listen to you. It's a very friendly vibe that everyone will pick up, initiating the mood like the cancer, but consciously now. The closer Pisces is to you, the stronger it is. It's impossible to ignore. Pisces is not just about our own subconscious, it's about your subconscious too, the collective conscience. This is why Pisces are sensitive, cause we're aware of the energy behind whatever you do or say whether you're aware of your own subconscious or not. And this is where Pisces can be manipulative and act before you. Now say the guy goes up to the bar, to speed up the process, the Pisces could purposely go and stand next to him and order a drink. That's all Pisces has to do. This guy will do the rest, he'll feel the energy, his subconscious will pick it up, he'll turn and look at the Pisces and feel compelled to start a conversation. Hey man, you alright? From the minute the Pisces locks eyes with him, it's downhill from there. Eyes are the window to the soul. Pisces uses it to great effect. Scorpio has interrogating eyes, intimidating intense eyes. Scorpios will see right through you and basically scare the lies out of you. Pisces doesn't want to scare you. They want you to be as comfortable as possible. So whatever you're hiding literally flows out your mouth like water. Have your tongue rolling out like a scroll. Here, sit down here. Look at all the padding. Take a seat and sink in. It's soft, isn't it? You sit in the chair not knowing it's an electric chair and that friendly Pisces is an electric ill. Pisces will switch off whatever emotion they are carrying. So when you look into a Pisces eyes, it looks empty but in a peaceful way, it's calm and welcoming. It looks like a place where you can get lost in and clear your mind. 
This is why Pisces knows everybody's secrets, because others get lost and comfortable. Not knowing behind those watery shallow apparent eyes lies your fate. You see, people think Pisces is non-judgmental. It's not that. It's just that we are understanding of all angles. A matured Pisces doesn't see the best in everyone. Get that right. We see what we're supposed to see. A Virgo will judge you by your clothes, the way you walk, your handshake, the foods you eat, etc. And if you're an observant person too, you'll easily detect Virgo scanning you, judging you. They can't hide it. Same way you can look at a Gemini and visually see they are thinking. Like you can actually see a Gemini is having thousands of thoughts at one time if you look at them when they're quiet. Virgos are like how all British people are stereotyped. Like we all live in the Queen's Castle. Care for a game of croquet after supper, my good old chum? Oh, make us a pot of tea, my dear. And bring a few extra biscuits and scones for our guests too. And some serviettes. Delightful. It's that snobby, I'm of an upper class than you energy. These mere peasants do not deserve to be in the same room or breathe the same oxygen as my virgin body. Leos are seen as the royalty of the zodiac. But when we're talking snobby royalty, that's Virgo, the sign after Leo. What's not seen is, Pisces judges you the same way as a Virgo, but it's not to look down on you, it's to know what's behind the clothes you wear, what's behind the way you walk, what kind of soul is inside you, and Pisces will politely give everybody the time of day to figure them out. If it's a criminal, Pisces knows how to speak criminal. If it's a victim, Pisces knows how to speak victim. That victim can actually have a darker spirit than the criminal, and if that's the case, Pisces will see it. You'll think Pisces is non-judgmental. These times, they've got a whole AI version of your soul stored in their mental cabinet. Pisces sees everyone in a 3D way. It's like being face to face with somebody, but seeing their side profile and the back of their head all at the same time. You've heard the saying, there's three sides to every story. Your side, their side and the truth. Pisces sees every side. You could tell a Pisces your side of the story. From that alone, Pisces can see the other person involved in the story side too. They don't need to hear it from their mouth. Now that Pisces has two sides in their hands, it's easy to put them together and see the real truth of the story. It's extremely easy for Pisces to do this. So this is also what can make people not like Pisces because if you're still angry about an incident and a Pisces is telling you they can see where the other person is coming from too, you can look at Pisces as disloyal when they're only telling you the truth to help you in the long run. So you gain a better perspective. But at the same time, if a Pisces can see you're not ready for the truth yet, they can just keep quiet and listen. Sagittarius and Pisces both are ruled by Jupiter, the planet of wisdom. The reason why Pisces is the wisest sign of all is because Sagittarius will tell you the truth no matter how you feel about it. It's the truth, that's the facts, deal with it sort of thing. Sag couldn't give a flying fuck how you feel about it. Pisces has more consideration for the person receiving the truth, so could tell them the truth in a lighter way, but can also give it to you raw and uncut like a Sagittarius. We have the choice which way to deliver it. But at the end of the day, the truth is still being told. And if that person isn't ready to hear the truth, then they won't respect the truth teller. It's as simple as that. Look at most fish's eye placements. It's on the side of their head, so they have a very wide field of view. Fish can see in colour and can also see ultraviolet light which humans can't. Light is different underwater and this is why Pisces sees things that other signs cannot, figuratively speaking. We need this type of vision to see predators coming and to be predators ourselves. Our opposite sign Virgo sees the smallest details in things. We Pisces see the whole picture in our faces and what we don't see our imagination and the little painter shows us. Virgos will make incisions and dissect your body limb by limb. Pisces will tear your whole torso off in one bite. Imagine sitting next to a Pisces who is looking onwards whilst you're facing the side of the Pisces head. I want you to seriously understand, a Pisces can metaphysically be staring you dead in your face at the same damn time. Yeah, our human shell's head is looking forward, but our soul can be staring you dead in your face and you wouldn't know a thing about it. So if you are to be judged, we will judge you accordingly. Otherwise, we live and let live. So this guy will get comfortable at the bar, chatting to the Pisces. What will happen next is, the guy and his mate will end up sitting at the Pisces table. It's inevitable. Yeah, come over you silly lass, I've made a new mate. Come meet me new mate. 
Because only this guy is the target, the friend wouldn't be under the illusion so strong. So when the target starts oversharing with the Pisces in front of the friend, the friend will be trying to interrupt like, hey, you're talking too much. They don't want to hear all that crap. Then the Pisces will be like, nah, man, feel free. Whilst in their head, the Pisces is thinking, you better shut up, boy, I'm working here. The friend doesn't matter in this scenario. They are irrelevant. They don't need to be studied. The target is in the shark's view, not them. But bystanders will get bit when the shark's activated, so it's best they're removed beforehand. The thing with Scorpios in interrogation is, when they observe how a Pisces gets information while seeming like they are not doing anything, it will make Scorpio envious until they ascend and realise the other way to do it themselves. Remember my example from the flat where Scorpio would have seen Pisces as impractical? Look at the scenario now. And Pisces hasn't lifted one finger to prod at nothing. So what will end up happening with this guy and the friend at the Pisces table? Well, the target will get isolated. How? Well, the friend is a harmless distraction and Pisces doesn't want to hurt the innocent. So they need to move out of view of the shark for their own sake. What is Pisces the masters of also? Manipulation. And I'm not just talking messing with people's minds. It's manipulation of energies and frequencies too. Pisces can manipulate their whole appearance and demeanour. So the Pisces mirror gets activated. The friends are distraction, so I'm going to get him distracted. Here, things will start to happen to distract the friend. That like they'll start getting phone calls and have to stand outside to talk. Keep needing to use the bathroom. Bladder's got a bit loose all of a sudden. Farts are feeling a bit wet all of a sudden. Each time, leaving the target and Pisces alone. The target is oblivious the whole time, laughing and drinking. Eh, hey, you're a funny guy, man. Eh, hey, look at these pictures, man. Mrs. sent them to me earlier. Scroll down, man. Eh, hey, you like it, man? That's me, man. Gonna go home and do up the beam later. You will know from my other videos what's happening here. Yeah, that guy's getting downloaded. His soul, his thoughts, everything. Pisces has seen this guy's soul now. Bad, bad spirit. Funny guy, but bad spirit especially in a comparison to the neighbours saw. Pisces just now needs to know if the target is aware of the flat where this happened for some extra information. All the Pisces has to do is slip the apartment they live in in the conversation. The guy's eyes response to the apartment name will tell the Pisces everything they need to know. Pisces doesn't need to be like, I live in this apartment and someone got 187 the other day. Nah, just mention the apartment, the apartment building and watch the eyes. The eyes, Chico, they never lie. By even just a slight twitch of the target's eye in response, that fishing net is being pulled out of the water with that guy in it and being taken to the middle of the ocean. This is a spiritual interrogation. It's a seek and destroy. Eye contact is crucial. Ever notice how like if you're angry at your pet, they will look you dead in your eyes to see how serious you are. Same with children. It's a great way to read people. But that Pisces uses this and understands it, they can shut off their emotions through their eyes. Don't take what I'm saying lightly. This is what gets people sucked in, stuck in the illusion of Pisces. You cannot read a Pisces by their eyes. You will be hypnotised trying to do so. And I can tell you these things all day, but as I always say, you will never know if a Pisces you know is doing this until they show you they have already done it. It's all fun and games and fancy words until you're looking down a shark's throat. If you look a Pisces in the eyes and you see pain, determination and it's like their eyes is crying but it's not visibly showing tears then they are probably showing you their real soul. Cause Pisces go through it. We deal with all the negative feelings in the world. It's more likely to pick up sorrow than happiness from the person next to us so that's what you'll probably see if we do show you. But can you handle the pain that we harbour? Where it's real, not a game or a drama. Where the feelings you have are not yours. Where the feelings ain't feelings, they're chores. Where it's easy to fall down in battle and not fight and be part of the cattle. When the creators invested their trust in our duties, in our missions, in us. No Pisces likes to suffer whatsoever. Articles will tell you Pisces likes to suffer because they keep doing things that makes them suffer. Another misconception. We are here to protect others. And that's the type of response Pisces will get for suffering with others, suffering for others. Listen, Pisces will sacrifice their self for the good, no matter what negative spin you put on it. But listen to me clearly and understand this too. Pisces can 
and will make you suffer and like to see you suffer if they're delivering your karma. There is no better symbolism than a shark for a Pisces. You need to understand the danger you will be in if you're in range of one. But you won't take that serious until you find out. You're dealing with a soldier here, a spiritual soldier. Do you think soldiers in the trenches like to suffer? Like to see their comrades being blown apart? Like to be telling their friends they're going to be okay when they've just got both their arms blown off and have an unsealable wound leaking from their stomach? Yeah, I talk with metaphors and analogies, but do you see the world we are all in? It's surrounded by suffering. Whether you witness it or not, the reason Pisces relates to it because suffering leads to resilience. A matured Pisces has suffered and are now resilient, meaning they can help those suffering become resilient too. That's the goal. It's not just to suffer with others to the end. Unfortunately, no one respects the Pisces sacrifice until the Pisces is ready to sacrifice you. Those tears a Pisces may show you when you look in our eyes aren't save me tears. They're tears from doing all the saving. Touch your soul. We've all heard someone say or said ourselves, it touched my soul or I feel it in my soul. These are things people say to express how deeply they are feeling something. It's gone beyond the body. It's a spiritual feeling. Well, what is a soul? My view of a soul is like, it's a spirit that is driving your body. Yeah, you look in the mirror and see sexy Sabrina with the dimples. But when you stare into your eyes, deep into your own eyes and look past your dimples for long enough, you will start to see something unrecognisable. That's your soul. I view the 11 signs as souls that gets into the airy suit at first and does not leave a human body until it reaches the last stage in Pisces. Each stage, the spirit jumps into another body for the next stage, from Aries to Aquarius. When you get to Pisces, your soul detaches from the human body. It's floating now and reconnected with the original source it left to start in Aries. At Pisces, it's half ready to leave and half still here in this dimension. The cycle's almost done, but not fully done yet. It's like, take all these lessons you've learnt from the other signs and go back and help everyone. Give back to the cycle before leaving it. But guess what? Now you have the option to enter one of the 11 previous signs' energies if you want, or you can just operate in the body you came here with at stage 12, the Pisces stage. Or you can get into anybody and act like whoever the hell you want to. Your soul as a Pisces has free reign in this last stage. It's like the last day of school before a major break. It's freedom. It's on clothes day. But you still got duties to do Pisces. That's the catch. That's my theory anyway. We feel relaxed and like life is a dream, but that's because we're half connected to the place after this. Understand, you are still here for a reason. Now we go to empathy. I've already described in detail about the Pisces empathy in another video, but I'll give more emphasis on how a Pisces has the ability to touch your soul. Now, empathy is being able to connect with anybody emotionally. If your friend is crying and telling you their dog passed away, sit in there hugging your friend and saying, I can imagine how you feel. I feel so sorry for you. That's sympathy. You're imagining how they feel and feeling sorry. Sit in there hugging your friend and not saying nothing, but you're crying deeply too and feeling your friend's pain. That's empathy. Instead of being separate from your friend and supporting them with sympathy, you are at one with your friend and going through it with them. That's empathy. Please understand what a real empath is. People throw the word around and haven't a clue. All Pisces are empaths, naturally. We are at one with everything and everyone. Why? Because Pisces is an active spirit with a body, not an active body with a spirit. So we are connecting with other spirits, their souls. It's not human to human touch. Is spirit to spirit when it comes to Pisces. When a Pisces kisses you, hugs you, makes love to you, they are doing this to your soul, not your body. So you need to understand you are dealing with something that operates spiritually by default. Your body can get damaged and heal. Doctors can patch you up. You can get surgery, transplants. Your body is taken care of for the most part here. But when your spirit gets damaged, unless you are in touch with your spirit to heal it or seek outside help, then you will be finished and your cycle can be ended there and then. We are all one spirit operating in different bodies. Virgo to Libra, two different bodies, two different energies, two different lifetimes, but the same soul. If your soul gets damaged in whatever stage you're in, your whole cycle can end. You will not respawn. This is not a game. 
Your body can shut down and your spirit can get a new body in another lifetime. If your spirit shuts down, then that's it for you forever. Pisces knows this. This is the type of people you are dealing with here. Dark and light Pisces knows this and will put a stop to that soul travelling depending on the reasoning. A light Pisces might take you to the middle of the ocean and reset you. You see that guy from the pub? Yeah, he done wrong, but he was remorseful. He regretted it. Does he deserve his whole cycle being ended? No, but he fucked up. And Pisces targeted him, so he will get resetted. He can start that stage over again and hopefully do better next time. Whatever sign he is, he will come back again as that sign. Restart that stage. But a dark Pisces will end your cycle for much less than that. There's walking zombies in this world. People's worried about a zombie apocalypse. Nah, zombies are already here. The amount of soulless people, Pisces and Scorpio, has left wandering the streets is beyond a joke. Scorpios are powerful because when they reach their phoenix stage, they touch Pisces levels of spirituality. So they can touch your souls too in many ways. People will think their heart's broken. No, no, it's more than your heart. It's your soul that a Pisces took a massive bite out of. That's what you're feeling. A broken heart can heal. Your soul cannot after a Pisces bite. I'm highlighting the bad ways Pisces can touch your soul because these are what most people deal with when they F around with a Pisces and find out. This is why Pisces does not need to be physically aggressive. We're literally spoilt for choice on how to get you. Do we get your body? Do we get your soul? Do we get both at the same time? The middle of the ocean sees it all and people get sent back to land on one bar. Battery almost ran out or they get consumed. Don't even need to bite, just swallow whole. The same goes for the words. Pisces words are like shark's teeth. You won't feel embarrassed getting cussed out by a Pisces. You will feel internally hurt. The type of hurt where you will randomly remember the words the Pisces bit you with 30 years ago. Permanent teeth marks left in your soul. But the same goes for the good things Pisces says. You will remember things Pisces says and not even know why. You wasn't even thinking of it and you remembered it. Why? Because it's stuck in your subconscious. It's stuck in your soul. It's a spiritual kiss. Negative words from a Pisces are bite marks. Positive words are kisses. Both gets embedded into your soul. Moi. I can talk about damage all day, but Pisces is here to heal too. We can heal your soul. Doctors cannot. There's only a few kind of people who can heal souls in this reality. And that's Pisces, Phoenix Scorpios and spiritual workers. Black magic dabblers or the most high their self. All water signs can heal you in some way, but there's levels to it. Some other signs like Taurus are spiritually connected too. Let's say we've got a mother. She's recently lost her son due to knife crime. Typical mother from London. Sad stuff. She's broken. Her child, her offspring is a part of her soul. Someone has taken a piece of her soul from her. That will stay with that spirit forever. Not just in this lifetime as that mother. So she's in need of spiritual healing. So let's say a Pisces enters her life somehow. This is what the creator will do. Remember, we're the messengers. We'll be sent in times of need. So she gets talking to the Pisces. Pisces gets to know her and her pain and see she needs healing. Now this is where empathy can be used for the good. What Pisces will do to this broken mother is remove her soul from her, download her pain, restore her to a previous uncorrupted state, transfer positive energy into her soul from us by spiritually hugging her, then put her soul back into her. And yes, we still made a copy of her soul for safekeeping too. You know how we do. But this is the Pisces healing. This will all happen whilst the mother is sitting in front of us. Now all that mother has to heal now is her broken heart. And you know what's the best thing about that? Your body will mend itself over time. She just needs time now. But her foundation, her soul has been repaired. Unless there's spiritual intervention, then your soul will never heal. That's the facts if you believe in spirits and souls people. If you're a Pisces, then you have the ability to heal your own soul. Realise this, because we are back in touch with the Most High. And that we Pisces deals with things like souls and spirits, things like race and religion, you know, things that causes division amongst people, shouldn't affect a woken Pisces. We don't see black person, white person, Asian person. We see free spirits. Yeah, the spirits may be on different frequencies, but it's still free spirits. There's more to the human body than skin colour. 
that don't mean be naive and walk into a sundown town as a black person trying to hug everyone because you're all one spirit. Because I'm sure Uncle Bob Bobby with the wooden leg will cap your ass, but it's just having the awareness of what we all are inside. You will come across many delusional Pisces, but the thing is, you can't judge them. You can't judge them straight away because you don't know what they're on. Let's say it's 1920. We've got Billy the Pisces bigot who lives in a bigot town. Billy could be delusional and asleep going along with the town's people's ways. And even though he's in a delusional state, he will still be dangerous as hell, being a Pisces who's dedicated himself to a cause. Billy could also be wide awake and going along with the townspeople's ways to fit in. Even though he is taking part in the activities, he will be battling with his soul because his soul will know it's doing bad things to good people. But let's say it's Billy, the sleeping Pisces who wakes up one day, he's realised all the evil he's around and decides to take revenge for the greater good. Billy's at a meeting one night, in the forest with the rest of the group. They're all putting on their hoods and lighting their torches ready to hit the town. Billy pulls out that Thompson and starts airing that out. Ping, 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 ah, ah, ping, 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 ping. Billy's going wild with it. But Billy would have known beforehand that he wouldn't have been able to take them all out. He would have known some will return fire. So Billy would have accepted his fate beforehand. He knows he's going, but his goal is to take out as many of these evil spirits as possible. They're going with him. That's the Pisces sacrifice, the martyr. So again, you can't judge any Pisces because you don't know what's going on in their head, what their true motives are. You may never see it. But the true Pisces sacrifice is real like that. It's not just talk. The Pisces martyr is a serious yet disrespected thing. RIP my boy Billy. You can also get Pisces that devotes themselves to a religion. But as a Pisces, we can never be fully closed off or one track minded. Not all Pisces are religious, but all Pisces are spiritual. You can't escape it. There's too many possibilities. Too many things to explore to close yourself off. The world is supposed to be over a billion years old. A billion. Truly deep that. Like what was whoever or whatever was living here 500,000 years ago believing in? Things change over time. Information gets misinterpreted over time. And the Chinese whisper game is the perfect example of that. So as a Pisces, have a belief system, yes, and always give thanks. But we have to remain open and adaptable to new pieces of information. We're a mutable sign for a reason. And that's why we seem like the most delusional out of the whole zodiac. Because we are the only ones with minds not trapped in this box we're born into called reality. We cannot be trapped because we are the ones whose senses are connected with things outside of the box. We see things and hear things outside of the box. That's how we even know we're in a box in the first place. There's undiscovered tribes on this earth who have no idea about iPhones and drones with completely different beliefs and ways of living to the norm that we know. There's a whole universe out there. There's a whole universe inside your own body. There's a whole universe inside your own head. Or maybe everything is actually here on this place we call earth. Maybe the space we think is above is actually down below. Maybe the night is really day and the day is really night. I have so many theories on life and possibilities that has nothing to do with being a Pisces. Or maybe I only have those theories because I am a Pisces. Either way, when you really listen to what I'm saying, I keep repeating, we are back connected to the source. The source is the creator of everything. Meaning we are back at being at one with everything. Pisces is just the name of that state. It's not to describe a person because we're more than that. And saying that doesn't mean another sign is lesser than us. They are us. We are them. We are not what we think we are. The source is us. It's hard to grasp the fact that there is something bigger and more important than our actual selves, but we're closest to understanding it out of everyone here. So with saying that, some Pisces will get tired of the chase of new knowledge. We'll get tired of being a Pisces in itself. All that mental travelling and choose to dumb their self down to have a quiet, peaceful life. Even if they know what they are following makes no sense to their minds to their soul and they'll ignore it and follow along. Albert Einstein once said, the important thing is to not stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. So Christian person, Muslim person, Jewish person, no, that's free spirits. If you indulge in the division, then that's a you problem. If you as a Pisces, the sign about universal oneness, 
indulges in any sort of division, then you are further from your spirit than you think. But for the fact you're even hearing this video is a good thing because it means you're on the path to self-enlightenment. You're seeking things to understand yourself more, which is needed for you to be able to guide others. I'm just another one of you sharing what I know and think. I'm no messiah, just another fish in the sea. Good and evil is all Pisces should care about and that is a problem a Pisces will deal with in the end. That's why a true Pisces is open to everyone. But that doesn't mean everyone is able to leave once they enter a Pisces house. Pisces is the end of the cycle in more ways than one. Jamaica's motto is, out of many, one people. Meaning with all the different races, different cultures and the different beliefs, we are still one nation. That's what Pisces motto should be spiritually. Out of many, one spirit. It's all about the spirit at the end of the day and at the end of the zodiac. We own nothing. Your money, your house, your clothes, your spouse, your skin colour, your whatever means nothing once you leave here. You are your soul, which belongs to the most high. That's what being selfless as a Pisces means. You understand it and accept it. That doesn't mean you are worthless or useless. It means you are a part of everything. It's a beautiful thing. But that's why selfless Pisces traits are seen as negative because others do not understand it. They'll be like, Pisces puts others before their self. They need to learn to be independent. Yada yada. They just don't understand what Pisces is. There is no self when it comes to Pisces. It's a spirit here for you. That's why Aquarius is the realest sign out of the 11 other signs because they are at that F people stage. They're for the people, but it's still fuck people. They now know what it's like here, so they're looking over there now. That's Aquarius. That's why they're detached. They realise there's a spiritual world and get their hands on it. That's the water bearer pouring that spiritual energy into humanity. It's like, hey, look at this out of the world magical water I've discovered. It tastes like fairy dust. Hey, check it out. Look what I've made with it. So the soul's ready to leave the body to become one again at the Aquarius stage after discovering it. So when we get to Pisces, the last sign after Aquarius, Pisces is that water energy Aquarius had their hands on. And that's why you'll find when it comes to Aquarius and Pisces relationships, they typically won't get on because Aquarius will try to take actual control of a Pisces. They will actually try more than any other sign. It's extremely personal with an Aquarius. Aquarius will try to claim you and have your water energy in their arms physically. The same way it's depicted with the water bearer. They'll be like, hey everyone, look at this Pisces I've got under my wing. They're special, aren't they? They're mine though. It's like Gollum in the Lord of the Rings. My precious. I'm not saying Pisces is Jesus, but the archetype of Jesus is Pisces-like. And I know Christians expect Jesus to return one day, but if Jesus did return, do you honestly think in this day and age, he'd get treated right. Did you not learn what the Romans did to Jesus way, way, way back then? Or is it just cool to wear a man on a cross around your neck for aesthetics? This world is evil. Evil runs here. That's why bad things happen to good people because it's not a suitable place for good people. The only real separation on this earth is good spirits and bad spirits. That's the foundation. All the extra stuff, race, class, and maybe religion, that's just human distractions made by the evil that runs this world to divide us all. We are one as a greater spirit. But that's the annoyance of this stage in Pisces, because we are here for everyone when everyone isn't there for our Pisces. It's like still having that realisation of the Aquarius, but back with the tools to spiritually cleanse. That's why you'll find many Pisces hiding away somewhere like, fuck all that healing people shit, but it's a duty that must be completed. You're the spiritual messenger, the spiritual soldier, do your job then completely become whole again. We're half a step away. Or don't do your job. That's cool too. You'll just keep coming back as a Pisces. Doing the same thing again and again. It's the same for every sign. You must complete your stage. Magical touch. You'll find Pisces and Scorpios all up in the spiritual world. Same way you'll find Scorpio alcoholics sitting right next to Pisces ones. Hell, we're all addicts if you factor in the social media pill that got mixed in all our drinks. When you as another sign starts exploring those areas and looking for out of world answers, or maybe you had a weird dream and are looking up the meaning, or keep seeing the same numbers, that's where Pisces is connected to naturally, whether we're interested in it or not. 
where signs like Sagittarius and Aquarius look to, we are there. And this contributes to reasons a Pisces can seek out ways of escaping it. Who wouldn't want to be riding a unicorn that's flying over rainbows in a place with white castles and pink fluffy clouds that taste like candy floss because you're flying so high you're able to eat them. Instead, you're a spiritual antenna and all these randy spirits constantly attempt to get up in you. No dinner, no serenading, nothing. So you either sink or swim as a Pisces. The choice is yours. There are many spiritual workers who use their powers for bad deeds and there's many frauds too, especially in the tarot card reading business. Many people picking up cards and spewing up bullshit off the cuff for monetary gain. They don't even believe in the shit theirself. You're more likely to run into the evil and fraudulent ones than the true real gifted ones. And if you're just a simple non-spiritual soul, just looking for guidance, you'll be taken on so many false trips you wouldn't believe. You'll be extorted and misguided, left even more lost and in debt by the end of it. We all need to eat and earn, right? But I do feel a telltale sign is if you're seeing a worker and they tell you they need to do this and that to help you, but you haven't got all the money, then what good soul will turn you down if you're a good soul too? So it's no money, no help. No true Pisces will turn you away if you present your clean spirited self to them and are in need of spiritual help. This is more than money. This is real life karma at work. Money doesn't exist in the spiritual world. That's why people can use other people's spirits as forms of payment there. It's real messed up over there. I just don't feel like those kind of workers are working under God's light. If they can simply cut contact with you as soon as they can't get any more money out of you. But it's a business for most of them at the end of the day. They don't care if you're good or not or doing good or not. If you got the money and they got the powers, then deals will be made. Or if you got the money and they got the lies, then deals will be made. That's also why so many cowards run to the Pisces world. You've got Pisces cowards running from it and human cowards running to it. You see if you become ill all of a sudden, then you go to the doctors and they can't find anything wrong with you but you're declining at a rapid rate. This is where you need to seek spiritual help because your soul is what's declining, not your body. Your body's not functioning right because the soul driving it is breaking down. Or maybe your body does get attacked and aggressive illness pops up out of nowhere and takes you quickly. Doctors don't even have time to try and heal you. This is spiritual work, nothing natural about it. If it's something that's attacking you, breaking you down, you may be able to reverse it. That's the eighth house, it's practical darkness. You can physically do something about it. But if it's already attacked, like a one-off blow, then there's almost nothing you can do. You will need the actual creator or a fully tuned in Pisces to heal that or some sort of spirit that heals. That's the 12th house. There's nothing physical going on in there. When you hear the word healing, don't think about bandages and nurses and shit. That's all the way back in the 4th house. That's Cancerian energy. By the time you get to the 12th, you are in a whole nother dimension. The 8th house is seen as the scariest house. But what's not understood is, you can actually overcome the 8th house. It's deaths and transformations, rebirths, rising from the ashes. The house of higher education is after it for a reason, in Sagittarius, where you gain some true wisdom. The 12th house is out of your physical control, unless you've transcended. It's like trying to fight a ghost. That ghost can hit you, but you can't hit it. It's like impossible to overcome. There's no rising from any ashes here. You will be dissolved if you're the target. It's the end. When you break it down, how the 12th house is not seen as a scarier place is beyond me. But it's the same way a Pisces is not seen as the scariest sign. But at the same time, a true Pisces doesn't want any kind of title. Because that's a cover blown type of scenario that secret people don't need. I've heard many stories of people randomly developing incurable illnesses. I've seen incidences like this too. And I'm sure many of you have seen or heard about these type of things too. The ones where you just know that some foul play has taken place. People out here doing some wicked things to others under the choir in regards to magic. Especially dark sided Pisces. And this is why I always stress that a dark Pisces is just straight evil. Because they'll attack anyone in every way possible innocent bystanders or just people they don't like for whatever reason they will eat them up physically mentally and spiritually putting a spiritual hit on somebody then watching from afar or even close watching that person decline whilst you're around them acting like you're concerned for them is a fake thing i'll never stand for 
And low level Pisces and Scorpios will do things like this. A true Pisces isn't no coward. We're soldiers. We don't hide in the bushes shooting from afar. We get up close and personal. Face to face, spirit to spirit. Like we're stuck in a small jail cell with you. You will see what we're about when it's too late for you. So like I've said before, fishes eat other fishes. Never forget that. The bad kinds of fish and any other bad spirits that thinks they can lurk in a true Pisces waters will get eaten. Rest assured, their cycles will be ended completely. Reset buttons broken. There's not even an option to reset them. The empathetic terminator is always at work. Don't get in our way and talk more Pisces. There's things people around you or others need to hear when we're the ones most likely to keep quiet. But even with saying that, shut your ass up, put your seatbelts back on and make sure that I always clear. We'll be arriving at our destination shortly.